Hello and welcome to another episode of Bare Bones Wargaming, a show with no bells, no whistles, no frills, just a man, a camera, and his game. On this episode, uh, we are going on a little R and R. Now, most of the time, 95% of the time I'm a war gamer, but every once in a while I find a game that I really enjoy and I use it as kind of like a break between my war games and stuff when I start to get burned and I'm just like, you know what, I need a little R&R, &R. I need to pull back from the front and of course, as you all know, any good commander is always going to make sure that his men get the R&R &R they need. Um, because, of course, morale is important. Having that break is important. Or, to uh, quote from Starship Troopers, Mr. Radchek, you know, I expect the best, so I give the best. Here's the entertainment, and here's the beer. So, this is kind of like my entertainment and beer, if you will. So, for those of you that are my diehard Wargamer uh, viewers, if you're not interested in this, because this is not a war game, uh, I'll give you five count to go ahead and vacate and you can see me again next time um, with whatever video I'm gonna do next who knows Oss Creek by the way has been postponed till January so um, yeah so maybe well actually the next video I probably will do will be my best and worst of this year so so in five four three two one and if you stay well as they say at the beginning of Frankenstein well we warned you. All right. Why do I say that? Because what I'm looking at here is a review of Horrified, Universal Studios Monsters, um, produced by Ravensburg um, Publishing. And I forget the designer's name right off the top of my head, so I apologize for that. Um, but Prospero, here we go, Prospero Hall. Okay. Um, now, when I was a kid, I absolutely loved... All those old Universal movies. I have most of them on Blu-ray and DVD. Um, I grew up on all that stuff. Uh, took me years to finally see The Invisible Man, which was one of the harder movies to track down. Um, how much do I enjoy this kind of stuff? Well, again, most of my stuff is history, and most of my stuff is wargaming. But um, every once in a while, I indulge in well, a little extra. So as you can see, there, those are the action figures. Um, Classic monsters there, the Invisible Man, Creature from the Black Lagoon, the Wolfman, Dracula, and Frankenstein. Which, of course, is what this game is all about. So, I'm basically going to do a review here because this, the, the gameplay of this is pretty simple and straightforward. So, I just want to do a review for you folks and a little preamble for that. For those of you in the know, so to speak, you know, I was gone for 14 days. I could have been gone for more. Held up in the intensive care ward. Lying on the floor. Now see, the problem with me and Alice Cooper is he can go way higher than I can with the See My Lonely Life Unfold. I can't hit that high. I can go low. See my lonely life unfold. I see it every day. See, I can go low, but I can't go high. Now that's a little preamble because of the game. Again, if you know anything about Universal Monsters, you can put all that together. Because, of course, what are we talking about here with this episode? Boom, 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 boom. <whistles> womp, womp, womp. That's right, Bare Bones Wargaming, opinion time. <whistles> womp, womp, womp. <whistles> womp, 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 womp. Alright, so, <coughs> we're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of Horrified. So, to start off this review, I just want to say good evening. I am Dracula. I bid you welcome. Which, by the way, a bit of trivia if you didn't know this. Um, Bella Lugosi, everybody imitates that, you know, nowadays. But um, when Lugosi was learning his lines, he had to basically, he, he was Hungarian, didn't know English. So what he did was he learned his lines phonetically. And since he focused on the phonetics, that's why it comes out with that kind of interesting little bounce. Um, if you look at some of his later movies, his English is different um, further down the road. But anyway, so 
Horrified Universal Monsters, very simple. Basically, this is like, um, as somebody described it, it's kind of like Pandemic, but it's not as arduous. That's a good way of putting it. Okay, it is a cooperative game. You take on the role of one of several heroes. You get so many actions per turn, and then you have all the monsters to deal with there. Okay, as you can see here from the game board, you've got your village, and you've got your nice figures and stuff. As you can see there, there's Frankenstein, or we're technically speaking, the monster, because, or actually, super technically speaking, Adam, because that was the name of him in the book. And then, of course, you have, let me see, oh, there we go, there's the inspector. You also have your heroes, then you've got your villagers. There's Mr. Dr. Crawley heading up for the, the uh, precinct. There's poor Maria. Again, if you know the movies, you know all these people. Um, she's trying to make her way to the camp over here. So, uh, all these are set up. Nice little village here. Each monster has their own card, which different things you have to do to defeat them. I just defeated the Wolfman in this game here. Um, Dracula has a different set of conditions. Um, so basically, you're trying to work together to defeat anywhere from two to four monsters. Uh, the book doesn't recommend more than four, and I can understand why. But I guess if you're really feeling brave, then you can go off the deep end and do that. All right. So again, that's just a brief overview because the whole point here is, um, you know, I don't want to get into a whole lot of detail in gameplay because the gameplay is fairly simple. I mean, the rules, uh, which the rulebook is very nicely done, by the way. I've only had a few questions I had to look up on Board Game Geek, but actual rules are like ten pages. And then you have the rules section on the individual monsters to clarify some things. So, yeah, very well done overall. So here we go. Let's talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. Good is the theme. Um, if you love the Universal Monsters, uh, you will love this game. Um, when I was a kid, years and years ago, <clears throat> more years than um, I really care to think about, if you want to be completely honest about it, when I was a kid, many, many moons ago, um, I had a game when I was a child. Maybe some of you had this game too. Here, I'm just—I forgot to um, pull up the picture on Board Game Geek um, for it. So just give me a second here. I'm trying to get it to come up on my phone if I can. Ah! But this came out like in the early '80s. This Monster Mansion, which I remember, and I'm sure it's hard to find an intact copy of this because there was like 40 little tokens that went with it. But when I found this, you know, and I was like six or seven years old, it blew my mind. Uh, Milton Bradley made it, which was in Massachusetts. Sad because two of the favorite things from my youth came from Massachusetts. Milton Bradley and I'm pretty sure Hill's Department Store, which if you're from that time period, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you don't, tragic. Look it up. But I'm pretty sure that came out of Massachusetts too. So, the theme is great. I mean, if you know these movies, you will recognize all these characters. Uh, you will recognize even the logic behind how to defeat each monster. It, it's really, really cool. This thing just drips with theme. Um, this is the Universal Monsters game I've looked for for years to play. You know, it's, it's just, it's great. Um, there's so much here. It's kind of crazy to think about. Okay, Replay value, very high, because you have a couple different things going on. You have... Um, monster cards that you draw to see what the monsters are going to do and then uh, let me show you a better card than that hang on a second um, it also shows you which monsters to activate they all have a symbol here's the wolfman dracula and the invisible man you're crazy to know who i am aren't you um, that's one of my favorite movies um, once I finally got a chance to see it, I always loved The Invisible Man. I thought it was so well done. I like Claude Rains, though. He has one of the best voices, in my opinion, ever for the movies um, at all. So, between that, you've got all these different little tile markers that are in the game that are located in different places. You need them to do different things with um, the different heroes, the different monsters. There's six different ones you can do. Uh, those combinations just make really good replay value here. Okay. The other thing about this I uh, like too is this is really kind of, to me, this is a Goldilocks co-op. It's not too hard, it's not too easy. Um, it's just right, you know. Because um, like I said before, the, the pandemic can really kick your butt at times. Um, sometimes Castle Panic can be a bit too easy, in my opinion. But this is like in the middle. Um, this is, this is... This is to kind of go along with another one of my um, good things here about it. This has a lot of tension, but without that whack-a-mole feel that you feel with Pandemic. It's just like, 
you know, you can't stop. You have to sit there all of the aim and bam, 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 bam. This, because depending on the monsters you have, depending on the combos, combos with the cards, you can get pounded for a while, but then you also get a little bit of a respite. You know, it's like you can be like, whew, okay, caught my breath. Oh, shoot. It's Frankenstein, he paused. I don't know why he paused. I don't care why he paused. I'm ready to roll, okay? But you kind of have that, you, you have the tension without feeling like constantly, um, you know, you have to be listening for every little sound, so to speak. So I do, I do like that. It is, it is just nice in there, okay? And uh, the cards, again, I think the cards are nicely balanced, and that contributes to it um, as well. Because, you know, the monster symbols that are on them, the events that are on them, um, again, you can kind of get pounded for a couple turns, but then you can have a couple turns where, you know, hey, there's not much going on. The monster's a pause. Who knows what they're doing? Um, and it can be mixed up, too. But either way, you get that little moment where you're like, Whew, okay. All right, let's take a moment here and think, okay? Speaking of which, the combos are cool. I like the way these have been thought out. I've tried, tried some different things. Um, I had a game with the Invisible Man and the Creature from the Black Lagoon. Um, I have a game right now of, of Dracula, the Wolfman, and Frankenstein and the Bride. Um, it's, it's just the combos are really, really neat. The only thing that's sad about it is there's no Phantom of the Opera. And although I know this is not... Um, Strictly a universal property because, of course, in my opinion, the best and most famous Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde was done by Paramount in 1932 with Frederick March in the lead, which he won the Oscar for Best Actor, by the way. Um, those are the only two that are missing from this set. That would be really cool. And actually, I'm working on, on my own um, variants, if you will, for those particular monsters to add them to the game, figure out how to defeat them, that kind of thing. So I'm kicking some ideas around. Okay. Um, so, uh, let's see what else. Um, again, the nice thing about the monster concepts is if you've seen the movies, you can see the link between the two, you know. Um, even with the Wolfman, which, you know, you have to go and basically find the cure for lycanthropy and, and stuff. You know, uh, Larry Talbot was desperately looking for that. He was hoping to find a cure, some way to, to, to save him and stuff. You know, if you know um, Frankenstein meets the Wolfman, you know. Um, that was part of that storyline. So there is a lot mixed in with um, not just the original movies, but also the um, the sequels that came after them, which was very good too. Okay, and I think the monsters are nicely balanced too in what they can do. Um, I, I think the combos to put together they make a nice. I hate to keep using the word balance, but. It's, it, it is. It's just, it's this, in my opinion, a lot of thought went into this to kind of, and a lot of time went into it to figure out, okay, what's a good balance here? I've played this thing now about 10, 11 times, and I've only had one game that was completely way out of whack. You know, it was over in seven monster cards, and that's just because of the way the cards fell, um, the fact that, you know, my people didn't have any items to defend themselves with. And then, of course, there was, like, villagers, and the monsters were mauling the villagers left and right, which that's one way to lose is, um, if you look at the top here of the board, uh, you can see the uh, the terror scale up here. Um, you know, it's if you get it up to, you know, the skull there, it's over, boys and girls. You can see I'm almost ready to lose here. Um, and that's another good thing, too, is that you can play this solo, no sweat. There is a solo method where you play with just one hero, but um, not my cup of tea, but I... I, I'm enjoying playing a couple. So far, I've only tried to play two heroes um, against a maximum of three monsters. But I'm also practicing this because my wife is one of those people where she will play games like this with me, but she wants me to be able to explain the rules. And she wants me to have played it a few times so that I understand things. So if she has questions, then I can answer them readily and stuff. Um, she's not a big fan of learning new games. But once she does, you know, the ones she enjoys, she really embraces, like History of the World and Nations and things like that. So... Uh, this is very easy to play solo. You know, there's not a whole lot of hidden stuff going on. Um, you can randomize things if you want with the monsters, which way they go and stuff when they move. Um, if you have choices in the game, the players choose. And sometimes you can do that as well. So this is a very easy solo game. This is very solo friendly, without a doubt, without even doing the solo method. Now, the bad. Um, sometimes the randomness can be a problem because sometimes the, the combination of cards can make for a short game. Like I said... One game, I got completely whacked in seven cards. It was over. The terror scale jumped off the charts, and that was that. Um, part of that was because I had the Wolfman, and the Wolfman's special ability, um, on the dice, there's only three facings. There's special ability, blank, 
and hit. And with a special ability, the Wolfman bites everybody in the space. So if the Wolfman goes into the space where, like, you're trying to protect three villagers, and he shows up, and you don't have anything to defend yourself with, you're like, ah, no. And he gets that exclamation point, everybody gets bitten. So everybody in the space gets nailed. So all the villagers die. <laughs> um, and... The hero also takes a hit, too. Okay, Heroes, when they're knocked out, can come back into the game um, through the hospital. But, um, but yeah, that was nasty. That's kind of what happened. I was, I was trying to shepherd home these villagers. I'm like, dude, you people got to get off the streets, man. And, um, the, you know, the wolf man showed up. Um, and, bam, just, just nailed my whole group. Ugh, it was awful. Terrible. So, um, so th there can be things like that. But, again, I've only had that happen once in ten games. Every other game I've had, most games, I should take that back. I had a few games where it was pretty easy. I won the game when there was only one or two on the terror scale. But most of my games, the majority of them, have gone to at least four, most times five and six on the terror scale. So again, the tension is there. The buildup is there. You know, um, There was a lot of thought put into this. You know, uh, It's because you can't do everything at once. It's just not possible. Um, yeah, it, it's just because you know, the tiles aren't there or... You know, the people aren't where they need to be and things like that. So so it, it is well done, but that randomness can can be a bit of a problem and could, you know, annoy people. My advice is if that happens, just be like, dude, you know, that doesn't normally happen. Let's try another one of these. Um, and that's another good thing, I guess, about this game is it plays pretty quick. Uh, I got this on Sunday um, from Target. And I have played this. This is my 10th game, which is about to end here very shortly, one way or the other. I've played it 10 times since Sunday. So today's only Wednesday. You can do the math on that. Um, so The only other bad thing I have is that the cards are kind of thin. I sleeve them, as you saw. But even sleeving them, it's hard to shuffle them. So I'm probably going to have to put you know, some kind of playing card in the back um, to stiffen them up, make them easier to shuffle. Because uh, it's, it's, they're just a bit thin. The rest of the quality of the components is nice. The tiles are very sturdy. Um, the figures are very cool. I mean, you know, some people might want to paint the miniatures. I like them the different colors because it's easy to look at the board and identify who's who. Um, uh, the rest of it is the components are very good. Uh, the draw bag could be a little bit bigger for those of us with bigger hands. I ended up having to take this bowl and put the markers in there and just kind of close my eyes and draw because the, the draw bag was just too small. And I, I couldn't get in there and move them around much, so that was kind of annoying. So I guess maybe that's the other bad thing, is a few of the components are, are not so hot. And to be honest, I don't have anything really ugly with this game. Um, it's a ton of fun. It really is. Um, yeah, this is the kind of game that, you know, I hope someday when my little men get a little bit bigger here, my little, my big, my big guy, I have my big guy, my, my little guy, my big guy just turned four here. And um, he's getting a little more interested in, in, in the games. He's starting to have a little more patience, too. He's a very active little man. But, you know, this is the kind of thing I'm hoping to introduce him with board games and stuff. Because, you know, you can play together and, you know, try to beat the system and all. So, um, it is just, it's a lot of fun. It's got tons of theme. It's, in my opinion, it's just well-balanced. You know, a lot of effort was put into this. It, it, it's really, really enjoyable um, to me. So without a doubt, I give this two big thumbs up because this this game is going to be a great, not so much filler, because filler I think of like short war games, like the video I did on, on my favorite filler games. But this is going to be like one of my R&R um, &R games. You know, after I've been pounding away with, you know, whatever, running to Moscow, trying to find the Japanese carriers at Midway or El traipsing with Alexander to God knows where because Alexander wanted to go everywhere, um, you know, or, or dealing with, you know, T-34s on the open plains of Russia. Um, this is the kind of game that it's nice to take a step back from. You know, I have a few games like this. Another one I really enjoy and maybe I should do a review video on too at some point is the, the Batman, the animated series, one of my favorite shows ever, um, Gotham City Under Siege. That came out last year, I think. And that's been a lot of fun, too, to play from time to time. Not quite as quick and easy to play as this, though. This is one of the quickest, easiest games that I have that kind of fits that bill, like um, um, Conquest of, of Planet Earth um, kind of fits that bill, too. So Hellboy does, too, but Hellboy... Hell, I like Hellboy, but it's a little long. 
that's the only thing is this is takes a while to set up this this takes a matter of minutes to set up once you get used to it five minutes you can easily have this set up if there's more than one of you working on the setup less than that so it's great um, it's tons of fun so um, oh one more thing too as I end the video here um, I did notice that nobody seems to have this. When I first heard about this, and I stumbled across this, this is one of the few times in my life I was grateful for those recommended story things that sometimes pop up, you know, on your homepage. Um, I was like, hmm, Universal Monster, board game. Let me check this out. And somebody did a nice review. I forget the website. I, I wish I could give credit, but um, I don't think, yeah, I don't think I know um, anymore which one. Um, so... Um, but anyway, when I heard about this, I checked the usual suspects, like Noble Knight Games, Cool Stuff, Miniature Market, nobody had it. So, of course, I checked Amazon, naturally, because Amazon is, well, Amazon. And basically, people were charging twice the amount for the game, because nobody seemed to have it. I was like, dang, man, that sucks. You know, it's like, this game's like 35 bucks retail. And people were asking, I think the cheapest was 66 but then I remembered, I was like, wait a minute. I had my Black Adder moment. Hang on. I said, I look at the entry on Board Game Geek and I'm like, Ravensburg. Now, wait a minute. They made, dun, 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 dun. they made the Jaws game that I bought over the summer at Target. So I was like, wait a minute, let me check my local Target stores. So that's what I did. I went online and lo and behold, one of my Target stores had a copy and I went ahead and just, you know, did the pickup. I was able to pick it up within literally like an hour. Uh, within placing my order. So if you're looking for this, like as a Christmas gift or something, and you don't want to pay prices like that, my advice, go online, check your local targets. You, your local targets might have them. You know, I live in Richmond, Virginia, and we have, I forget exactly how many, I think we have five. But, um, but yeah, I was able to find it. No sweat. Piece of cake. The closest one to my house. So that was awesome. Um, so, anyway, um, just to add the final thought to this game, but this this is a lot of fun. Um, if and if, again, if you're big on the Universal Monsters, you like cooperative games, this is a no-brainer. Even if you're just like the Universal Monsters, you should pick this up. It is tons of fun. Okay, so again, next time um, because today is already what December 11th. Yeah, December 11th. Next time, probably the last video of the year. Probably I'll do it next week. Because um, I'm waiting to see if anything else comes out right here before the finish line. Um, but I doubt it. I really don't think there's anything coming out. The new to me that I did last year. The best and the worst um, of the new to me. This year's been a pretty good year. So I don't have a whole lot of worst ones. But um, I've had a little trouble trying to narrow down the best um, in the top ten. So, um, yeah. So that's the next thing I'll do here with my video series. Alright, as always, thanks for watching, and my diehard war gamers, don't worry, we'll be back to war games next time. Everybody has to go back to the front eventually, that's just the way it goes. Unless, of course, you get that million dollar wound, which, of course, you know, I mean, when it comes to war gaming, nobody wants that. So, um, nobody wants that period, I guess you could say. But, um... Well, I should, well, never mind. Let's not digress into things. Forget it. Anyhow, my point being that my Wargaming faithful will be back to business as usual. Back to your regularly scheduled program the next time around. So, this has been Tim Korchnoy from Bare Bones Wargaming saying thanks for watching and uh, beware. Watch. The moon is full. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, actually, you know, even a man who is pure of heart and says his prayers by night can become a wolf when the wolf bane blooms and the autumn moon is bright. Which was completely made up by the guy that wrote the script, by the way, incidentally. So, um, yeah, lots of good stuff with this. Um, and it is just fun. So, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.